Today we are going to talk about the development of human personality, right? Uh, first of all, we should define what is personality. You know, all of you have the concept that uh, different people have different types of personality and everyone has a unique way of thought patterns, emotional patterns and behavioral patterns, right? I have my own ways of thought patterns, behavioral patterns and emotional patterns which are more or less consistent over the time, right? So all my thought patterns and my behavioral patterns and my emotional patterns put together defines my personality. Now the question is that, that why different people have different personality? All of you must be knowing that all of you do not have same personality. Why all of you have different personality? The main reason is that, that we are primarily driven by our unconscious mind. Let me tell you by an example. Let us suppose there is same situation and under same circumstances, do you think all of you behave in the same way? What do you think? My question is, under same circumstances, do you think all of you behave in the same way or slightly different way? Different way. Why? Maybe present circumstances are same for all of you. But why would you behave in a different way? The reason being that our mind are having a lot of information about our emotional patterns, behavioral patterns, right? And about our thought patterns and everyone has those patterns different from each other. Now from where those patterns come? Why under the same circumstances we behave in a different way? If you ask Sigmund Freud this question, he will say different people behave under the same circumstances in different way because they have different unconscious mind. Now the question is that what is unconscious mind? Right? Uh, okay. I will start asking you certain questions. This lecture is going to be an interactive lecture and by your answers we will deduct certain things. According to Freud, he says if all your mental activity is put into a container, suppose from Mr. Ostok, we take all his mental life, mental activity, all his thoughts, all his dreams, all his fantasies, all his memory, all his experiences, everything from his mental life we put into this container, right? This container is having his all mental life past and present. Now, what really happens that Freud says that there are three layers of the mind. One is very superficial layer. Some information is present in very superficial layer of mental life and most of the things are in deeper layer. I will ask him certain questions and let's see how he answers. Mr. Oztok, do you know where you are present right now? You are sitting, sitting in a hospital or lecture room or lecture. you know it. You know who are the people around you? Not all of them, but, some. but you know some idea. Most of them are medical students or doctors. Right. You are know, knowing where in the world you are? Yes. You know it? Okay. Yes. So he is aware of his self, he is aware of his surroundings, right? And all this information is present in his, in his superficial layer and this superficial layer of mental activity in which all present aware, awareness is present, we call it conscious mind, conscious mind. So what is conscious mind? Conscious mind is that layer of the mental activity about which we are right now very much aware. You know who you are, you know where you are, you know who are the people around you, all this activity is in which layer? Conscious layer of your mind. But there are certain other thoughts or fantasies or mental activity which are in deeper layer of the mind and right now you may not be aware of that activity. Again listen, right now there is some mental activity and some thought or fantasy experiences are present in your mind which are not right now in your conscious layer. For example, I ask a question to this man, 
Uh, do you remember the first girl you fell in love with? You remember her? Good. Uh, were you thinking about that girl right now? Before I ask question, were you thinking about that very girl? You were right now thinking about that girl. Okay, he started blushing. I think we should go to some person who is less reactive about his first girlfriend. Okay, let's go to Mr. Ostok. I hope he ever had a girlfriend, right? So Ostok, you remember that lady with whom you fell in love first time in your life? Yes, I do. You, I wasn't thinking about her. Okay, he make it clear. He says, yes, there was a lady and I was in love with her. But he says, right now, he was not thinking about that very lady. Is that right? It means all his memories or experiences or fantasies about that lady were not present in his conscious mind. But with little effort, he could bring those information to the conscious mind. Is that right? If I ask you that you have done your high school from which country? Puerto Rico. But before I asked you a question, were you thinking about that? No. But when I asked you a question, with a little mental effort, you brought the information to conscious level. So what really happens that below this conscious layer, there is another layer of all mental activity in which there is a lot of information present. And from here, you can bring the information up to superficial layer. You have a lot of memories, a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings present into this deeper layer. And with a little effort, you can bring this information here. For example, if I asked you how you got admission in Unibe, can you answer that? You remember somehow what was the process, how you got admission in your medical school? Or you don't remember at all? You do remember, right? Why? Because that information you can take from here up to here. So this layer of the mind from where you can take the information up to conscious level, this layer of the men mental activity is called pre-conscious. What it is called? Pre-conscious. So now we have talked about two layers of mental life. This most superficial layer of mental life, that is about your conscious layer. In conscious layer, you are only thinking about present, who you are, where you are, what you are doing, is that right, what is the time, you are aware of all these things. That is your conscious mental activity. But with little effort, you can bring some information from your past up to your present awareness, right? And this layer, which has past experiences, past feelings, and past Fantasies? Someone concerned about fantasies. Past <laughs> fantasies, right? And these all information can be brought to the conscious layer. So this layer is called pre-conscious. Is that clear? Yes. Now we go to the real, real, real mind. There's a very deep area there. I think I removed this part. <laughs> Below the conscious layer and pre-conscious layer, there's a dark area. Because there is some information here, you cannot bring it here. For example, I ask you a question. Uh, when you were about six months old, there must have been a time when you were tiny six months old. And you were crying, you were very hungry. Do you remember there was one Friday and you were very small, six month old baby and you were very hungry and you were crying and your mother uh, did not attend you immediately. Do you remember that? No. no. Okay. Then you remember another Sunday when you were about eight months old and you were very hungry and your mother immediately started breastfeeding you? No. You don't remember? Definitely. He is telling a lie. Actually, his conscious and pre-conscious mind does not remember. This deeper layer of the mind remembers everything. Every, every experience which happens in your life Right? Every feeling you have and every fantasy you have that is present in your unconscious mind, the deepest layer. There's a lot of information present in deeper layers of the mind 
and this information which is present at this layer you cannot bring up to conscious mind with simple efforts let me tell you let us suppose one of you had a very good mother and who was the mother who was taking care of the person very good feeding him properly changing the diapers in time and emotionally keeping the baby very comfortable you may not remember but your unconscious mind must be remembering that those group of experiences and because when you were just one year old and if your primary caretaker or mother was very good to you and she was giving good care, care to you at that very time your whole world was only your primary caretaker at that very time your whole world was just your mother you never knew at that very time that what was happening in other countries what was happening in the wars you only knew if mother is good everything is good if mother is not good nothing is good you remember that now those times actually you have forgotten but your, your unconscious mind has not forgotten those experiences now if you were treated very well during your first year of life you have been treated very well it means that those experience which are present over here they are not forgotten and they are still driving your behavior let me tell you how when during first year of your life you were taken good care you develop a trust to your mother that whenever you need your mother is there when you are in trouble your mother is there whenever you are hungry your mother is there whenever you are wet your mother is there so your little unconscious mind thought that whole world is good and as you decided at that very time you, your mind started trusting the mother right that those group of experiences are still in unconscious mind and now you are still carrying those experiences with you and now if you need to trust someone those experiences will help you to make decision that you should trust or you should not trust there are other people who are unfortunately in the first year of life not treated well and at that very time when they were not treated well they thought mother is not predictable mother is not trustworthy and their unconscious mind with those negative experiences is so strong that today when they are going to make a deal their unconscious mind is telling them not to trust now you may be thinking how our mind can be so full that project the experiences of first year of life and mother experiences to the rest of the world answer is that your unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion your unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion this is number one reality number two real logical thinking is conscious mind unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion then there is another special thing about unconscious mind unconscious mind does not have a concept of past present and future when you are sitting here you can think about that these are the experiences of my present life you may think there are some experiences which happen in the past you may fantasize something about future but this all activity is pre-conscious and conscious mind the real the big layer of the mind the unconscious mind does not have a concept of past present and future whatever happened in your past all information which is present here is not considered as past experiences unconscious mind keeps them as present another trouble with the unconscious mind unconscious mind cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality unconscious mind cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality is that right whatever you fantasize for your conscious mind you know it is not real but for unconscious mind it is as real as real experiences so what I'm telling you about unconscious mind it's a big storehouse of information all of you have unconscious mind with lot of information 
all your life whatever good experiences or bad experiences you have whatever good feelings you had or bad feelings you had whatever good fantasies you had or bad fantasies you had whatever happened happened in your past that is buried in your unconscious and many of those things are buried so deep that with your special effort even by your effort you cannot bring most of this information to unconscious mind so you may think that you have forgotten those things but your unconscious has not forgotten those past experiences past feeling past fantasies it has just buried them and it has buried those all, all experiences buried them as alive normally we have concept we bury something that is dead but whatever is buried in your unconscious is not dead it is buried alive and it is still today right now is working there and it is still controlling your decisions of today for example i am the same teacher to all of you but do you think all of you like me in the same way or different way different way some of you may like me very much some of you may like me just little bit and even some of you may hate me for no good reason why maybe problem may be your relationship in the past with your father for example if your father was very good with you in your life then any other significant person come in your life you will try to have positive experiences and if you have some very negative experience from your father you find a difficulty even to adjust with your teachers the reason being you may find that same teacher you may have the same teacher but all of you may have different feelings about him problem is not with the teachers the difference is in your unconscious previous experiences of course some teachers are good because they activate good things of your unconscious mind and some are really not good because they activate really not good things from your mind right but you have to remember that today whatever you did with the people or with yourself you say that you did it logically but actually you were controlled by unconscious mind and this is the real control of your behavior and this real control does not take in a logical way that is why sometimes under the same circumstances people may have different behaviors is that right so is that clear to all of you that basically personality consists of all your patterns of behavior your patterns of emotional life and patterns of your thoughts but why different people have different personalities because they have different unconscious mind am i clear now we can move forward now about the development of personality there are two main people two main psychologist who talked about how the personality develop one is the all of you have heard of him sigmund freud right and second is some of you may have heard him the he is eric erickson so i will talk about both of them how they developed the theories about your mental and personality development right again all your past experiences are buried alive in your unconscious mind and they keep on influencing your past keep on influencing your present right now we will see how the personality start developing right here i will write uh, the first stage of development from the eric erickson this is the foundation of personality and gradually will move upward this is the first stage of development by the dr eric erickson and here we will start developing the stages according to segment fried now first stage of development mean first year of life right in the first year of life according to fried the first stage of development is oral stage oral stage and then i will explain that stage also 
what is oral stage? Let me tell you. When Freud tried to explain the human development of human personality, he said that at different stages of life, early life, different parts of our body become the center of our player. For example, according to Freud, and even you can observe it, during the first year of life, baby drives player from which part of the body? Babies, small baby, six month old baby, or one year, mouth. Have you seen it? Small baby has all the player from here. What he is trying to do? Whatever he finds, he will put it in his mouth because he want to get some player. Actually, oral stimulation gives the player to the baby. According to Freud, this is a special player center during the first year of life. And whatever you do, you put the baby's hand away, he'll put it in. You put it away, he will put it in again. His all player is coming from his oral area. Is that right? And why oral area is so important? Because for baby, it's the whole world. From oral area, he gets connected with the mother, who's primary caretaker, right? From oral area, baby is going to get the nutrition. From oral activity, when he a suck, a baby is suckling to the breast, he gets not only nutrition, but emotional love. And baby also gets physical support and warmth. Right? So all baby's player is around oral area. From where baby discover oral area to stimulate the oral area is great. Because a very early experience after birth told baby that whenever something nipple come in mouth, baby feels great, well protected, warm, emotionally secure. Is that right or not? And nutrition. So baby thinks that if I'm having player from this area, let me get more and more player. So when nipple is not there, he'll put his finger in mouth. Or mothers are clever. When they are not there, they put some sort of thing, you know, plastic thing in baby's mouth. What do you call it? Right? Why they put it there? So that baby remain and feeling that I'm having good player, something mother-like is there. Is that right? So Freud calls the first stage of personality development is oral stage. Is that right? You are developing gratification only from oral area. You may be laughing that what this breastfeeding or oral stimulation has to do with your personality. It has to do something with your personality. How? Because even some people, they remain fixated at this stage. They don't pass through this stage to the next stage properly. I will tell you later another area, baby will discover one more area in his own body to enjoy. But right now, in first year, he is fixed, working on his oral area and feeling great. Mentally, I told you, whatever experiences you have through oral area during your first year of life, you may have forgotten your unconscious mind has never forgotten. So even today, listen now carefully, even today when you are adult, some of you when you go under stress, you reverse to your oral phase. Let me give you an example, first of all. When you were just six, seven months old and you had some sort of stress, what do you do? You cry, <coughs> mother come, put you with, your, with her breast, nipple is in your mouth and you feel great. Your stress is gone. Is that true or not? Now, you are adult, grown up adult, intelligent. But still, your unconscious mind is same. So, some of you even go under stress today. You will reverse to the oral phase. For example, some of you when you are under stress, what you do? You eat more. What you are doing? You are doing oral gratification. Some of you may be complaining, you know, I'm under stress, I have to eat more. What you are saying, I'm under stress, I need something like breast and nipple. Okay, I cannot get it. Give me a lot of rice and few things. I keep on putting and my unconscious mind will get satisfied. There is something great coming into this area. Is that right? Now you're grown up. Everyone has different ways to gratify the oral area. Right? Some of you by eating more under stress. Even, you have seen, even some of you, I think you won't be telling others, but 
Sometimes you come across an adult under extreme stress, he may start thumb suckling. Okay, you mind it, forget about it. I will tell you a simple example. Look at the strong men and women who are at the prime of youth, feel very strong, little bit stressed. They put what is that stick they call cigarette in their mouth. And these people who are addicted to cigarettes, if you tell them this is nicotine patch, will deliver you as good nicotine. But I think they need something here also. That gives them relaxation. You know, they keep cigarette here, feel great. They puff out, again feel great. Is that right? That is reversing back to oral stage. Your un unconscious mind is driving you back, controlling you back. Let's go to that nipple stage and mouth stage. Let me tell you another example. Some of you don't smoke, but what you do when exam come, you put the pencil in your mouth. What, is, what happened to your pencil? It's not giving you any nutrition. What is happening? Your unconscious mind compulsing you, pushing you to put something in mouth. Right? And you are not baby. You don't want to put thumb. So what do you do? You put pencil. What is that? Another way to fight with stress. A proof that unconscious mind is still working in a very, very primitive behavior. Oral gratification. Right? Some of you, you don't like uh, to put dirty pencils in your mouth. You may love to put a lot of chingam, especially under chewing gum, and keep on doing it. More you stress, more you chew and grind and grind. Right? Oral gratification. Then, yeah, some of you love the, what is that? Oral gratification, one more fixation. You know, kissing, kissing, lip to lip kissing. Some of you enjoy less and some of you are willing to die for that. Why? Again, it depends on, for example, there is a boy who, who likes kissing, but he somehow come across a rare type of girl who likes kissing too much. What's the problem with them? There's mismatch on requirement of love through kissing. Why there is mismatch? The unconscious are different. You are understanding? So oral gratification in adult phases like kissing, even flesh and other activities which are done orally, oral sex, some of you may be doing a lot and some of you don't like it. It depends on what were your early experiences. And don't hate me for this information. Like other people you can also abuse Mr. Segment Fried who discovered these things for you. Right? So, according to Segment Fried, the first stage of personality development is lying around your, the area of the mouth from where you get the gratification or player center we call it. Right. During the same time, when Freud says that baby is developing his all player around mouth, Eric Erickson says that baby's personality develop not only on psychosexual activity, but also depends on psychosocial activity. Freud model is that personality develop on psychosexual activities. And Eric Erickson model is that personality develop on psychosocial interaction. So when baby is during the first year of life, he is also, he is also doing a, another important work. He is doing some certain very important decision in his mind. According to Eric Erickson, whenever you are at any special stage of your life, there are two forces which are producing emotional and social crisis and those mental forces, one force is positive and other force is negative. Let me explain. For example, according to Eric Erickson, during the first year of life, mental activity has to be centered on two opposite forces. One force is trust. During the first year of life, baby has to decide whether world is trustworthy or not. Or, its opposite, its opposite negative aspect is mistrust. Now, while baby is enjoying the oral gratification, baby's mind is working on something else. 
baby's mind is working and solving the problem of should the baby trust the people, trust the world or should not trust the world. The question is that how baby decides these two things. This is the challenge, first challenge in baby's life. The first challenge is that he has to do mental task. If you think that infants are not working, you are mistaken. They are also doing very important work. Their mental work is that they have to decide at first year of life that up to one and a half year of life, they have to decide the world is trustworthy or not. And lessons are at from that stage which are influencing your decisions today even. For example, some of you trust easily to the other people and some of you may not trust even your best friend. I know some of my friends, they keep on suffering but still keep on trusting. And there are other people who don't suffer because they don't trust, they don't trust anyone but they don't have any advantage also because you have to trust in practical life. But baby's mind has to decide about the trust or mistrust. Now this is a tension in the small mind of the baby because mothers are not perfect, they are also human beings. Now when baby during first year of life is totally dependent, baby is totally dependent on the primary caretaker. When you are totally dependent on other, then you have to trust them that others will fulfill your needs. Other, will go, other people will go with their promise. For example, a very small baby, just six month old or eight month old, his mind is working all the time. That I'm a dependent person, I cannot go and make milk, I cannot change my diaper, I cannot control temperature of the room. So, primary caretaker is going to, can I trust my mother or primary caretaker for my needs or not? For example, if mother is very caring, very loving, if she has been giving you nutrition properly, emotional need properly, changing your diapers, controlling the temperature, keeping you safe and comfortable, what you think? The small mind think initially, my primary caretaker is good. It's trustworthy. Whenever I'm in trouble, I just give a signal of cry and usually she is there. The small mind start thinking that I should trust. And of course, sometimes mother is mother and human also. She is not there in time and you cry a lot. And if she does not come, you're thinking, oh, I cannot trust much. Now, all the first year of baby life, mind is struggling between trust or not to trust. This is the mental tension. This is the mental challenge. And this is the foundation of the personality, the decision, which will be made at this time. If primary care taking has been good, then a balance will be achieved that baby will believe that most of the time, world is, mother is trustworthy. But because this message is learned by the unconscious mind, and I told you unconscious mind is not logical. You are still carrying that unconscious mind, but that is not logical. Unconscious mind as you grow up, initially it thinks, okay, mother is great, mother is trustworthy. Actually for you, mother represents the whole world. So as you grow up, you start believing the whole world. Even under worst circumstances, you think, I can trust human race, I can trust the external world, somehow things will get better. And if you resolve in the positive fashion, you get a very, very special strength in your personality. And if, unfortunately, due to sad experiences of first year of life, you resolve in this direction, you will put a very strong weakness in your life. Now, the baby who has resolved this in a positive way and decided that world is trustworthy, in spite of sometimes my mother is not there to serve me, immediately but eventually she comes so baby believes in that he can trust and when you can trust the world a special personality strength come to you that is the reward of this mental work in a positive way who knows that reward that reward is hope the strength which develops in the baby's personality is hope what is hope Hope is a situation when even if 
mother sometimes fail to give the service, baby has a hope she will eventually come. And when that baby grow up as an adult, sometimes life become very hard, right? Things look very dark and bleak. Still your unconscious mind is saying, you should be hopeful. And the person who is hopeful, he will do more effort and eventually come out of troubles. Now let me tell you an example. Let's suppose in your class, there is a girl, right? And there's a boy and let's suppose that boy has a very unfortunately early negative experiences, right? So he does not have strength of hope in his personality. What will happen to that boy? Little bit, he fail once, he will become hopeless. If he fail once in his exams, he will become hopeless. When he will become hopeless, next time he will not study much. Because if you are hopeless, will you study? And again you will fail. Or, if you have this weakness, in your love relationship, you have some disappointment. And after the disappointment, if you are on this side, you will become hopeless very soon. You will not pursue your love relations and you will lose them. But you will come across some people who have the strength in their personality, even in their love relation or in their financial situation or in their professional career, they have a big setback. Even after the setback, their unconscious mind is telling them, you see, I know you are having stress, you are having disappointment. Somehow, things will become okay. So that person will still keep on following the relationship, even if it is going bad. So you see, the way your mother treated during your early years, that is still reflecting the way you behave today with the people and in your professional situations and in your financial situations. Under the same circumstances, some people are more hopeful and other people are less hopeful. It is not the circumstances. It is also depending upon how you are treated when you are totally dependent on one human being. If that human being was good, for you, the whole universe is good. Let me tell you an extreme example. Have you heard of uh, revolution of France? There was a lot of bloodshed that dur during the revolution of France, the lower class people, right, and middle class people, they had revolution against the elite class, upper class, and they started killing everyone around. Of course, for the people who are in the upper class, that was a time during the revolution to be hopeful or hopeless? Hopeless. But there's a true story there. They say there was one of the very rich uh, French elite person, very decent and loving person. When revolution came, right, the revolutionary people, they killed most of his staff member and his friends. And then they killed his children, killed his wife, killed his parents, but he somehow ran away. He ran away. And eventually he was caught and he was killed. When he was also killed by gluten, at that very time, from his pocket they brought a letter out. You know what he has written just a night before? He has written to the French people that I know my mother and father have been killed. I know my brothers and my sisters have been killed. My children have been killed. I know I will be killed very soon. But somewhere I feel good in spite of these circumstances. Because it is good for France that middle class and upper class, middle class and lower class people should feel the strength. They are angry now with us. After a few years, they will be less angry and they will feel more free and they will contribute more for the goodwill of the France. So even in those circumstances, he was hopeful. Probably a lot of credit should go to his mother. And you will find some people, even their little problem, their car goes out of order and they think whole life is hopeless. I, I think we have to prove what happened when they were three, three months old. Right? Because that is the time you develop that either you will have what is your quota of hope, strength of hope, 
that is the first cornerstone in the development of human personality. Person with strong personality should be able to trust others even though he is realistic that he can be fooled but still he should be able to trust people with little mistrust and under even extreme circumstances he should remain hopeful. Is that right? Now let's suppose baby has resolved this stage. Baby has resolved this stage. Now baby is one and a half year or two year old. When baby is two year old, new challenge will come. This problem is solved. New challenge will come. Another mental task baby has to do. What is the next mental task? That will talk here. What is the second mental task of the baby? This first task was from up to 18 months. And it is from 18 months up to the second stages, 36 months, up to three years. There's another mental task. With that, there's another phase, developmental phase on the fright side. I will go to that later. First come here. Baby is now about two year old, right? He has enjoyed his oral activity a lot. Then he discovers there's another area in his body, a special area to drive the player. What is the next area baby will drive the player? Tongue. Yeah? Tongue? Tongue? Baby are not that sexual. Yeah. So, anal activity. Baby suddenly develop a special interest in his or her anus. Now, why they develop special interest in their anus? Actually, they suddenly come to know that they are not totally dependent on the world. There are certain things they can control. For example, they can control their own sphincter. And they say it's a great thing. Yeah, everyone likes to grow. Baby also likes to grow from total dependent situation to semi-independent. So first discovery, baby feel great that I can control my sphincters. No, the problem is that around that parents start toilet training. Now baby start developing the player around anal area. Right? And he try to control his anal activity. For example, if baby does not want to pass the fecal matter, right, he will control it. Sometimes baby gives so much value to their activity of the sphincter that they take pride in that. And mothers know sometimes baby put their product on something and bring to mother to eat. If mother is not cooperative, they put in their own mouth. Yeah, these are the true things. He is very proud. This is the first time he has a control, at least on himself. Small baby never had it. So, his next area of player is anal activity. And Freud call this stage of development, anal development of personality. Anal stage of development. So, baby has gone from oral stage to anal stage. Is that right? And According to Eric Erickson, baby is also doing some mental activity at the same time. Now what is the second mental activity? That is autonomy. Baby feel somewhat autonomous versus shame and doubt. Right? Now, in the second stage, the mental Decision is that baby has to decide is the baby fully autonomous or he should have a feeling of shame and doubt. Let me tell you. How baby feel autonomous? Now baby can move around. Do you think six month old baby can move around? No. But two year old baby can move around. He feel autonomous independent. He can control his sphincters. He can release his material. He feels autonomous somewhat. Is that right? Here is around anal activity. At this phase, now mental task is that baby has to decide to himself how much autonomous baby is. And mother, mother or primary caretaker around that time is doing toilet training for the baby. Now look at the situation. You know, baby has started controlling the sphincters, but there's no perfect control. Sometimes he does mistakes also. Is that right? You know. Now, if toilet training is very tight, 
you know some mother especially the first baby mothers don't have experience with raising baby so especially with the first baby mothers become very active in toilet training they wanted their child should have very perfect control on the sphincter as soon as possible is that right and if there is over control on this stage right baby baby feels more autonomous opposite to that there are other baby again if baby does a mistakes for example he passes his fecal matter or urine in the bed mother become extremely angry and punishes the baby then baby is harshly treated at this stage babies should not be harshly treated i will tell you what is the problem if you harshly treat the baby at this stage for example baby is not perfect he is just feeling his autonomous and whenever he thinks his autonomy fails he feels in his personality shame and doubt about his own personality for example baby does not want to pass fecal matter but somehow it goes out baby also feels shame and doubt and if mother beat him and very hard or punish he will feel very much shame and doubt that shame and doubt will stay all his life with him i told you unconscious baby may forget but his unconscious mind will not forget that experience so what really happens that baby has to experience decide a balance between autonomy and shame and doubt autonomy mean you have a choice of decision shame and doubt there sometimes times you make stupid decisions is that right another example for example baby want to move around and show to mother that i am autonomous very commonly around the 2 years of age baby the favorite word of the baby is who knows the favorite word baby is love to say to their elder no if you ask two month a two year old baby to sit down no i want to stand and you ask him keep standing he say no i want to sit what he is trying to do he is trying to show his muscles emotional muscles that he has his aut autonomous decisions he is not under your control his personality is opening up another aspect if you are good and wise parents you will be firm with the baby but with some tolerance sometimes you will tolerate his innocent no but if you beat him if you are harsh and punish him then he will not he will feel whenever i ex exercise autonomy i suffer so he will develop shame and doubt for his own decisions and shame and doubt on his capabilities is that right now we were talking about basically second stage autonomy versus shame and the major task for baby was what was the major task at this stage toilet training toilet training and at first stage what was the major task feeding right during the toilet training phase if baby is over trained and harshly trained that will also produce pathology you know what is the pathology what is the pathology those baby become obsessive compulsive ocd is babies when they develop an adult if you are very harshly unduly harshly toilet trained all your life not only your anal sphincters become tight i think your moral and social sphincters also become tight yes people become more unduly moralistic they start passing judgment on other they want everything to be perfect because these were their mothers they wanted perfect control on the sphincters so because they were harshly punished for their sphincter failures so themselves they got very tight control on their sphincter but that affect their whole personality when they grow up they want perfection in everything they are obsessed with the times they are obsessed with the schedules they are obsessed with the programs if any program changes they get very disturbed right they are very much concerned with the list of the things and if anything is short their whole world fall apart is that right if they are overly trained and they are having very strong moral values whatever values are they have and they always keep on passing judgments on others do you think this is a pleasant personality to work no so usually the first child not always but usually the first child is trained very harshly and very with lot of precision by the mother so these babies the first they when they grow up they want to be very responsible 
very much on time, everything according to the schedule, is that right? And looking perfection in themselves and also looking perfection in other. They're not fun to be with them. There's no fun to be with them. Opposite to that, usually if a mother has five children, by fourth, fifth child, mother has known that even if she is not so hard on the baby, somehow sphincters start working on the baby with little delay. And if mother doesn't care, because she has learned with the time, it is that even if she is not very hard on toilet training, somehow baby's sphincters start working. Then, those babies have opposite problem, because they don't have much training. They are messy in their life also. You go to their room, everything is messed up. Let's suppose, I tell you the situation, there's one person, extremely tight toilet training, other, no toilet training, little toilet training. The first person, when he is going to study, he want every paper in a proper way, all the colors of the pencil put in a special way, and I think he is going to study for one hour, but to make, put the things in order, he will make maybe long, two hours. Opposite to that, the other person, he is going to study, first he will take a book and throw it there, then throw another paper there, throw pencils there, then he will mess up with the bed, then he will start studying a little. And maybe you are getting it. Is it clear? These people are not having st strong moral judgments on them. And they don't have strong moral judgments on others. You are getting it. They're sort of relaxed, happy, go lucky type of people. So your toilet training has to do a lot the way you behave today. Is that right? Now, after that, the next stage. Okay, what is the fruit of this stage? If you resolve it positively, because baby mind is struggling with autonomy versus shame and doubt. If this is successfully resolved, what is the fruit of this stage? What is the reward? What is the strength to the baby personality? He will develop the willpower and determination. <coughs> right? Baby will develop the willpower and will and determination. Do you think all of us have same level of willpower and determination? No. All of you are given the same challenge today. Some of you will have strong willpower to resolve because it's not enough to have autonomy. Once you have autonomy, then you should have willpower. Is that right? So, why many of us have different level of willpower and determination? It depends on the how you were reach it there, how you resolve this mental task. Now another thing, if you are developing positive traits on this side, upper stages become easy. For example, a baby who resolved it on the trust side and hope, the baby who developed the strength of hope in his personality, that baby find it easy to develop will and determination. Because such people, who have the foundation of the hope in their personality, whenever they go into trouble, because they are hopeful, so they will work hard to come out of that situation. And with repeated experiences, they will know more we work hard, more better results they get in the practical life. And their willpower and determination progressively become weaker or stronger? Stronger. But opposite to that, a person, unfortunately the foundation is wrong. And he develop a personality which doesn't have much hope in stressful circumstances. Do you think a person who cannot very easily become hopeless in troubles, can that person have strong willpower and determination? No. Because willpower and determination is based on hope. If you are hopeless about your studies, will you have determination to study? No. But if you are hopeful, in spite of your bad grades, if you are hopeful, then you have determination to improve your scores and improve your grades. Is that clear? Now we go to the next stage. Here is fried situation. Next stage of development and there is array correction. According to fried, the area of player shift to another area now. Now baby discover another area of player. Yes, Mr. Ostok, what is that area now? Oh my God, he is obsessed with tongue. 
<laughs> I don't know what's wrong with his development. Oh, there are other things to enjoy, my friend. You have enjoyed oral stage. You have had the pleasure of the anal stage. Now there is something other in your body to enjoy. Why don't you talk about your penis? Yes. Around this time, baby suddenly discover why I'm so obsessed with oral activity. Let's enjoy the genitalia. Suddenly, baby discover that by stimulating the genital area, there's a lot of pleasure. And you know, whatever gives you pleasure, you do it again and again. So babies are like you, or maybe you are like babies. So what happens? <laughs> that we call this, Freud called this stage, phallic stage. Phallic stage of personality development. I don't know why he was developing personality around such thing. But anyway, he said, that once you have gone successfully through oral stage and anal stage, baby's center of player will now shift to his or her genitalia. Is that right? Let me tell you, it's a very important stage. And you have to resolve it very carefully. Rather, baby has to, a child has to resolve. Uh, do you think you want this stage to be discussed first or that stage? There, you know, here baby is busy with his special new center of happiness. <laughs> and there, baby mind is busy in some other mental achievement to develop the personality, right? Now next challenge is in the baby, initiative versus guilt. Initiative versus guilt. And both stages are hand in hand. Now, here first baby developed the hope in a positive way. Then he developed will and determination. Baby was capable of trusting the world. He has also felt he has some autonomy that he can move around, he can grab the things, he can control his sphincter. If he's angry, he can pass it out something. Right? <laughs> now he decides some initiative. By the time his mind is going to decide about initiative and guilt, his center of player comes around phallic stage. This is in boys, and if I forget, remind me how the girls pass through this stage. Now, around this time, what is the age of the baby now? That is preschooler, three to six year. Three to six years of age during that time. Now, personality will have new foundations. First of all, look at this boy, then we'll talk about girl. Around this time, boy discovers something very special, that he has something like there, which his mother is not having. Is that right? They become aware of this thing, that they are having a penis, and with their certain experiences, they come to know mother does not have penis, sisters do not have penis, and somehow they develop that all the people around the baby, because he is special interested in phallic stage, penis, so start observing what's going on whenever chance is there, and they do get some chances because females are not careful with these three year old, four year old. So, baby, now this uh, child discovers, male child, that I'm boy, baby boy, discovers that I'm having a penis, my mother does not have, and my father has. During this, baby has seen some other activity in the home. At very early stage, mother was everything. Is that right? The significant relation was only mother, right? Then. At this stage, autonomy versus shame and doubt stage, toddler stage, he knew that most important thing in the world are mother and father. Because babies start knowing that he's doing something, sometimes mother stops, sometimes father stops. But in early stage, fathers are usually not playing any big role. At this stage, they discover, baby boys, that we are having a penis, and mother does not have, and father has. Now they start resolving the mystery. Why this difference is there? Then small mind start working on this. Meanwhile, another trouble start. A big challenge and big crisis in their emotional life. That around this age, children start falling in love with the opposite sex parent. So baby, small baby boys start falling in love with the mother. Right? When they start falling in love with the mother, they get 
more close to the mother and they don't like their father to be around. If you, if you really observe the boys in this age, three to six, you will find that they want to keep the mother in a possessive fashion. And they don't like father coming home. Even they keep on suggesting to the mother, why don't you kick this man out? Right? Usually mother is not going into that baby talk. They are wise, you know. So, baby is now trying to take some initiative to the mother. He want sexually and romantically win the mother and grab it away from the father. And repeatedly feeling father is coming in between. Meanwhile, baby's small mind is also working up. Why my mother does not have penis? My mother is my love object, but why this thing is missing there? And unfortunately, all baby boy reach to a very horrible conclusion. Almost all of them somehow in their mind decide that this is culprit as father. Father is all the time hard in the home. Mother is afraid of him. I think my mother did some mistake and my father cut off the penis. Yeah, this is a conclusion in almost all baby boys. Then they become afraid of father. Because this is very valued thing because baby boy is bringing all player from this area now and he is very afraid of father that he may cut off my penis also. Yeah, that is true. That is called castration fear. The father will castrate the baby boy. Now he become more upset about the father and more loving to the mother. Right? All initiative is to love the mother. Now there is a lot of tension. You just imagine. Small baby boy, want to love the mother. Very disturbed every time father come and their mother and child relationship disturb. Of course, when father come in the home, mother is less attentive to the baby. She has to attend that man also, who claimed to be man of the house. Baby feel this very bad. And at the same time, he is afraid that he may not bring something and cut it off. <laughs> so, baby is taking some initiative to the mother. He keep on suggesting that this man should be away and keep on fearing and developing guilt also. Right? That what he is doing. Meanwhile, he takes some other initiative because it's not enough to be autonomous. You should have some initiative to do certain things. Right? Certain plays. During this, baby tries his best to displace the father, but most of the time they are not successful, you must be knowing. If mother kick the father out, but reasons are different, not baby boy suggested. Right? So this baby boys around the age of three year and six year, try their best to seduce the mothers by their innocent ways and somehow get rid of the family from the father. And in the end when they feel that their all seductive activity are not bringing any change, in the equation of father and mother and fear of getting castrated day by day become more. So what happened? Tension in their mind become very high. This mental crisis or emotional crisis in this baby is called Oedipus complex. You know Oedipus complex? This is Oedipus complex and baby has to resolve this. Baby boys eventually most of them decide all our special seductive effort to mother fail and there is no way to get this man out. A mental tension is too much due to fear of castration because baby is thinking all the time that I am planning to kick this man out and he may be also planning to cut it off. <laughs> so eventually he decides this tension is too much and all with his effort he could not win the mother. So he thinks forget about it. This loving mother is not a good thing. Right? So his mind represses that thought and push all that tension, fantasies and experiences into unconscious mind. Buries it there. It's not good. Why? Because when baby will become free, the baby does not want to win the mother. Right? His tension will go down. That he is failing on the mother. Secondly, fear of castration will be also less. So Oedipus complex will be resolved. But baby unconscious mind is so unhappy with this experience that it want to forget about sexual things. And baby will go in next stage which is called sexual latency. Sexual latency. Sexual urges will be latent, suppressed. 
During this phase, another thing happened when he's shifting from this phase to that. That because baby, a baby boy, in spite of all its effort, could not win the romantic love of the mother, right? And could not displace the father. So this baby boy decides that how he can win the mother. Then he comes to know, mother is won by the father. It means I should be someone like the father. You are understanding? Yeah. So baby will resolve this tension because father is the winner and I want to be the winner, so I should be someone like father. Then suddenly this baby boys start taking father as an, as an ideal. They start dressing like father. They start behaving like father. And even when father is not in the home, they behave with the mother like father. They sit on the father chair, put a newspaper like this and call, Karen, Karen, can you come here with a cup of tea? <laughs> they are trying to behave like father. And that is very important for the development of the baby. Why? Because this is the time when baby boys decide that they should be manly. Is that right? But they should not love their own mother. When they will grow up, they should look for some other heterosexual experiences. You are understanding? So this is very important to resolve this stage successfully. Is that right? So baby boys pass through Oedipus complex and baby girls pass through Electra complex. In Electra complex what happened? That they say baby girls also fall in love with the opposite gender parent, that is with father. But their troubles are not as dramatic as baby boys because they already don't have penis. Is that right? So they are not fearing, fearing anything castration. Secondly, they try to win the father and of course they cannot win the father. So they observe that who is winning the father? Baby girls decide fine, mother is winning the father all the time. So I should behave like mother. So they idealize their mother and they start behaving emotionally and socially like feminine behavior. Is that clear? So in females, babies, this complex is resolved easily. But for male baby, this, has, this is a very difficult step to pass through. Is that right? Now, we were talking about initiative and guilt. Now, in initiative and guilt, baby has to take certain initiative in this age because he has found some autonomy in previous stage. He has willpower and determination to do certain things. For example, baby may start taking small initiative. Parents may buy the small cars and they behave as if they are driving the car themselves. Baby girls start with the mother, they try to help in cooking somewhat. They start taking some initiatives and sometimes they do mistake and then they feel guilty. Let me tell you, the same activity at this stage and that stage means different. I will give you an example. If you imagine that there is two year old baby boy, he takes his father's you know, wristwatch and happily put in the toilet drain and flush it and watch goes down. Now for baby, if you are sensible father, do you think Baby, so a two year old baby who has put your watch into toilet and flushed it out, he had some evil intentions? No, for that baby, it's, what was that? That was something shining, going round and round and then going down. <laughs> and he enjoyed it, is that right? He took a special autonomy, it was his decision, autonomous decision to flush the, is that right? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but if he is taking the watch and you grab it away, he feels shame and doubt. But if you grab it away, it is good. But if after that you beat him, he will lose, you know, confidence in his capabilities. Now you imagine. But if five-year-old child, he takes father's watch, put in the flush and flush it. Do you think this baby has taken initiative, but it is a wrong initiative. This baby is supposed to know that this shiny thing, this father's watch, if it is put in the flush and it is flushed, this baby should know what will happen to watch. And this baby should also know what will happen to 
that is temper and baby should feel guilty so same event at this stage is manifestation of autonomy here this will end up into guilt but do you expect two year old boy to be guilty of his flushing the watch it is round round going down shiny but here it should be guilty so what happens that here babies take initiative and when they make terrible mistakes they should feel guilty and personality should have a balance in both things the healthy personality develop when initiative is strong with little touch of guilt because if you have only initiative and no guilt that is abnormality and during the stage if parents make you for everything you do you are made to feel guilty again personality is defective this is the balance of the two which will bring the new strength to your personality if you really successfully mentally resolve the stage in which there is mental conflict between initiative and guilt then the reward of the stage is purpose you know you should have initiative with purpose there is no purpose in flushing the watch and it should not be done by this baby you are understanding now baby who is developing person who is developing on the positive side in first year of life he developed to be the strength was hope then during autonomy he learned will power and determination and during initiative versus guilt baby developed that whatever initiative should be taken it should be taken with a purpose and courage so these are the positive strength which are you are, you are developing in your personality if you are developing on this side you are developing very sad type of personality bad weak type of personality you don't trust people with little problems you become hopeless on this side you are always not sure you are doubtful about your about your capabilities and you are not willing to take initiative because whatever initiative you took in your childhood you felt guilty so this will be strong personality or weak personality on this side weak personality is that right no problem up to this and another thing i want to tell that if autonomy is pathologically too much if parents make you too much autonomous in early life that is also dangerous people who are made autonomous too much at early stage when they grow up they develop a problem and problem is impulsivity they become impulsive you know what is impulsivity that without thinking of your capabilities and without thinking of consequences in an impulsive fashion you jump into new situations because you wrongly feel too much autonomous is that right and if you go to that side too much shame and doubt right then you will because toilet training was done and you parents were very hard on you right you are all the time feeling shame and doubt about your capabilities to control your sphincters and other activity then this is the first baby you know first baby harshly trained they be, they develop compulsivity compulsivity is like compulsivity compulsivity is like obsessive compulsive neurosis that you want everything to be perfect before you do anything otherwise you all the time have doubts about the situations then we come here if you have too much initiative if this ingredient of personality is pathologically too much you develop another problem you know what is the problem here in your personality ruthlessness i will explain how ruthlessness if you are given at this stage between 3 to 6 year too much initiative without any guilt when you develop as a person adult you take initiative for your goals but in ruthless fashion because you don't feel guilty and when you are achieving your goal you don't care what happened to others you step on their head or you step on their chest you don't care what happens to other you want to achieve your goal that is the problem when you were given too much initiative without guilt you become ruthless but if this ingredient is over too much then you have another trouble and that trouble is severe inhibition and inertia too much inhibition in everything 
You are not going to take any initiative in the life. Have you seen some people who don't want to make any decision for themselves? They want others to make their decision. They don't want to do any venture. They say nothing ventured, nothing lost. What is happening with them? They are inhibited. And even this may end up in males with impotence and females in frigidity. Right? So, this, uh, there should be always a beautiful balance in between the two. A little more tilt towards positive side. That you should develop a personality with strong initiative with touch of guilt. This is very important, the touch of guilt. Because if you don't develop the touch of guilt, your parents just tell you whatever you want to do and you are having full initiative for everything and full sport, what happens? You become a selfish adult. You don't care what happens to others while you are going for your own goals. Is that right? Anyway, now this person who has developed balance in all these things, he's a hopeful person and whenever trouble is there, he will still keep the hope, he will exercise will and determination and all his activity will be with the purpose and courage. Is that right? Then baby will move to the next. Six year to twelve year of age. Six year to? From six year onwards, six to twelve years of age. Now his social circle is widening. As you know, initially it was only mother. Then mother and father. Then in next stage, family. Which are the important significant people. Is that right? Now, school and neighborhood. Now, baby has gone beyond the family and he's somewhere between 6 and 12 years of old. The best thing is that sexually he has gone into latency. At this stage, usually boys like to play with boys and girls like to play with girls. Is that right? And boys are idealizing their fathers and girls are idealizing their Mothers, because they suffer too much at this stage, you know, phallic stage. Now, at this stage, there's a new challenge. They are going to school. There's a pressure to learn new skills, academic skills, athletic skills, or music. There are new challenges to learn new things, right? Now, let's suppose there's one baby, one child who is positively developing. He goes to school. Now, parent. Game has gone beyond the parents and family. Now school teachers are also significant figures. Baby has to perform. There's a challenge between two tasks. Number one is industry. Industry, hard work. Industry versus inferiority. Now let me tell you what is meant by this. Now new mental task has come. Industry versus inferiority. If child will perform well in the school or in the games on other tasks which society is pushing the child to learn, if he will perform well, he will feel I'm, I'm not inferior. He is comparing his performance as compared to others' performance or with certain standards. And he will feel I'm not inferior and when he feels better he work hard to learn new skills and new competences and we say the child is becoming industrious. Which child will more easily go to positive sign? Now look at the foundation. Those children who go to the school, but if they have the strength of hope, will and determination, purpose, they will become more industrious. It means if your foundations are better, you can resolve at later stages of life easily on the positive side. For example, when this baby is asked to learn mathematics or suppose any foreign language, Right? Or let's suppose he has to learn science. Now what happens? This is a new thing for baby. He has to develop a new skill. When baby starts reading the books and taking less lessons from the parents, he feels frustrated because it's new. But if he has hope, if he has willpower, if he has a purpose, he will strongly come up with positive outcome. But if baby has sad things here, do you think he will have hope that he will succeed, succeed in learning new skills? Even if he is learning in a bad way, will he ex exercise willpower and determination? Will he plan his time purposefully to achieve something? No. So what I'm trying to say that if already foundations are weak, the outcomes at higher level of personality development 
or more chances it will go to the weak side. Or if foundations are strong, you will also develop more strengths on the higher level of personality development. Let's suppose baby has balanced out these in a positive way and resolved this complex conflict in a very good way and maybe a child learns in the school that yes, it's good to be industrious, it's good to learn, right? And it is not good to feel inferior. I'm as strong as I should be, right? Whatever performance he is giving, he feels it is good, parents are appreciating, teachers are appreciating, grades are becoming good, right? And he will resolve on this side. His personality will develop one more strength. And what is that strength? That strength in personality is skill and competence. Now all these strengths will help him in, as an adult. If you have resolved positively in school time, skills and competences, and you have developed a confidence that when you want to learn new thing, you can. This person will be very strong as an adult. That, let's suppose, there is one person who is developing on this side, another person developing on that side. Just imagine, both of them are 40 year old and both of them go into severe financial reverses. Who will come out? This one. Because he has a lot of financial losses, both of them, but he will be still hopeful, so keep on trying, keep on working. Even though outward circumstances are depressing, but his willpower and determination to come out of the bad situation will be strong. Then all his effort with, with a purpose to come out of financial trouble. And whatever new skills he has to learn, he has confidence to learn the new skill to come out of that trouble. But person who is at the age of 40, suppose, where he loses the hope at the financial tragedy, he does not have any willpower and determination. He, he cannot live in a purposeful fashion. And he thinks he cannot acquire the skills to learn new business to come out of his trouble. He will stick with his problems. Are you understanding? Fine, let's suppose child has learned this stage also positively and he got a reward of skill and competences. Now baby will go to the next stage. At this stage, the last stage will develop of the, what is this? Fried. Fried says that now baby is entering about 13 year to 18 year. So what is this puberty? That will become puberty. At puberty, there is sudden, you know, awakening of what? Sexual interest. Suddenly baby again goes back to his own genitalia. Rather more interested in others' genitalia also. <laughs> you, all of you have passed through that stage, isn't it? Now, there is reawakening of sexual interest. This is called by fried genital stage. Genital stage, right? That is at the time of puberty and up to few more years. Genital stage. If, now according to Freud, if you are resolved these things positively, baby will take interest in opposite sex. Because boys have resolved the Oedipus complex and they learn to be like men and love women, but not their own mother in that way. Girls have also learned at early stage that it's not good to fall in love with the father. It's better to be mother-like but find someone else. So this is a genital stage according to the Freud. And Freud stopped personality development here. This was the Eric Erickson. He kept on developing personality until your last breath. Right? And actually, Eric Erickson was, he always claimed that he learned most of psychology from the theories of Freud. But actually, Eric Erickson came in psychology after Freud. Freud died in 19, late 1930s and Eric Erickson died in 1994, few years back. He, he developed advanced stages. So Eric Erickson say, and this is the most important stage. Eric Erickson says that when you pass 12 to 18 years old, the most important stage of your life come. A big mental task to do. Right? What is that? Again, there's a challenge. There are two mental forces and you have to resolve in between them. Those mental forces are that you have to decide between identity, identity versus role confusion. Role 
confusion what is it when human beings are somewhere around age of 13 to 18 or 13 to 20 the major mental task is to make a clear cut identity identity mean that around this age adolescent start thinking who are they let me tell you here let's come back to this question you know three month old baby what he thinks three month old baby thinks he and mother is one person even they don't know mother is different thing they feel so intimate with the mother is that right but as they grow up they learn we are the son of this mother and father at this stage they learn we belong to that family at this stage they say we belong to I'm a good son I'm a good family member and I'm a good school member I'm someone asked in school where you are it is his identity that he is eighth grader or whatever but when baby come here suddenly he discover a new thing he says fine my mother is my mother but I'm different than mother my father is my father but I have my own uniqueness fine I belong to a family but still I have a own uniqueness I have many friends in school but I am different than still unique there a question come who am I what is my place in the adult world now he start asking baby himself what is his role in the practical adult world adolescent this is a big pressure to the adolescent to decide this thing so they start the special venture in search of identity they want to know are they doctors or going to be doctor or they are going to be engineer or they are going to be very religious or they are going to be atheist or they are going to be good who they are what is their place in the practical world this is a major question so they start thinking about their identity in search of identity they do many things which disturb the elders for example suddenly they like pop music suddenly they start going to the church and too much suddenly they shift and they decide no only they should be great doctors what is happening at this time adolescents start looking around themselves and in the media a role model they're looking for a role model because for them here the most important most important opinion is peer pressure here father looks somewhat stupid yes suddenly they come to know the mother is not as strong as they thought and father is not as wise as they thought they think their friends are more wise because they know about some special music group which father doesn't know so father should be stupid and they should be wise is that right now around this age they are looking for identity for example if they have some in the media on the television they are seeing some special pop show again and again they say we should be like that or they think you are showing them war heroes they say okay we must go to the military of the see they see there that there is a very special type of if girls see a special uh, model very successful lot of money lot of cameras after her she should be like that or the see there is some uncle who is a very good neurosurgeon okay we should be like that now they start actively looking for the role model is that right and they have to decide in their own mind what is their identity so this is the time to look for identity if you pass successfully through this stage then you will commit yourself with one specific identity you decide to be a doctor then you start taking the practical steps that as a doctor how you should study which universities you should plan to go how the doctor's life is there you are giving devoting your mental energy to a specific identity another friend he resolve and decide i should be a military person so he will start taking interest to that side but before they reach to final identity they do something so much switching as a temporary identities they acquire and that is the time where elders have to handle them with a lot of tact because in child mind or adolescent mind elders have lost their authority because they are not so wise son will look to the father oh father you have only 3 million dollars 
You are not billionaire. You never thought to be billionaire. You sound stupid. Yeah. Or girl may look to the mother. Oh, you cannot manage my father. Look at me. I can get five men after me like this. You cannot manage your own husband. You are stupid woman. Right? So, somehow, adolescents have lost the real influence of the elders and more influences by the peer group. So elders are just like powerless, but still they have, due to their experience, they have to be very tactful to push the babies to positive identity. Because sometimes during identity search, children or adolescents may go to negative identity. And they may become fanatic. Or they, become, they may join some very narrow-minded religious group just in search of they want to be something. Or they may join some mob in search of identity that we belong to this mob, right? They may acquire negative identity or positive identity or worst, they may not have any identity. They have role confusion. So all of us, when we are passing through adolescent, the main mental energy is used in search of identity and elders and media role, elders role is that take the adolescents towards positive identities. Because if they go to the negative identity, they will make their trouble for society. And if they don't have any identity, still they will have trouble for themselves at least. Because person who does not have identity, clear cut, he is not well devoted to any final decision in his life. What will happen to that person? He will keep on changing his roles and professions and situations. One day, you may find a role confused person in the age of 35, suddenly he changes religion. Okay, everyone has a right to change religion if he want to. But in the age of 37, you find he has gone to another religion. In the age of 40, he decides, I don't have any religion. He's confused. Is that right? You have to have a clear identity around the stage. Then life will become easier. Right? You have to know who you are in this universe what you are going to be in the adult world. Is that right? Now you imagine, look at the situation. Let's suppose uh, there's a neurosurgeon in the family and there are two boys, both of them are 16 year old. Now both of them decide in their mind, okay, it's great to be neurosurgeon. Rather, he, our uncle is stupid, he's neurosurgeon. It's more wise to be cardiac surgeon. Rather, very wise to be plastic surgeon. Now, they start dreaming about the identity of suppose cardiac surgeon. Now, when they start thinking about, they look for the choices. If they, they find it takes many years, it takes many, much effort, right? So what happens? The person who has these strength, if he really wants to be a cardiac surgeon, he will commit to that. For another cousin, he say, no, I don't want to be cardiac surgeon. I don't want to be such committed life in a profession. I want to fly in the world. I want to enjoy the spices of life and I want to have a lot of money. He decides to be a big businessman. He wants to be a billionaire. Now his identity is like Trump, like Bill Gates. But again, that is an identity. So he starts thinking about that. But he will stick to billionaire's plan if he has hope. But not only you have to be hopeful to be a billionaire, are extremely successful, you have to have willpower and determination. Then you, according to that purpose, you align your all life activity and then you should develop all the skills and competences required to achieve that big thing. Either it is big cardiac surgeon or big businessman. Is that right? If you have all these things positive, you will stick with your ideal. Right? And you will be devoted. You will be loyal with something. And we say the fruit of the stage will be loyalty. Or we call it devotion. The, this is a capacity of devotion. Everyone does not have capacity to be devoted to certain way of life. Devotion. Opposite to that. Same family. One uncle is cardiac surgeon, other is a big businessman. But unfortunately, one child was raised with negative experiences. He wants to be a billionaire, but very soon he becomes hopeless when he looks at that there are only few billionaires in the world. Even he, for a few months and years, he thinks to be a billionaire, but his willpower and determination is not there. He cannot. He wants to be 
big cardiac surgeon or billionaire, but he cannot adjust his lifestyle with that purpose. And he is not willing to acquire skills and competences. Do you think he will be well devoted to his ideal? No. You are understanding how our early care is putting the foundations for our adult life. So, the reward of resolving the conflict of identity versus role confusion is loyalty and devotion. You are committed to your own self and your adult place and you are willing to bring all these resources for that future plan. Right? During this, you know, adolescents uh, make couples. Do you think they are usually long lasting or short lasting? They are short lasting. Why? Because that is not for love. Sometime a girl get attached, 15 year old girl attached with a male only to find an identity that I am girlfriend of Vyagne. That's it, her identity. Or one boy is looking for identity, okay, he just likes a girl very much so that he gets a new identity that I am a boyfriend of this girl. Due to these reasons, because they are trying different identity, even relationships are not very committed in the, with the opposite gender. But as soon as they cross 18, around that, very big new challenge come. You know what is that challenge? Suddenly they feel, they have answered many things. Look here. Here the answer was, come back. The main big question here was, is the world trustworthy or not? Here the real was, am I independent enough or not? Here the question was, can I take initiatives or not? Here, can I develop the competencies or not? Here, who am I? And you know what is the question here? I am so alone. Suddenly they come to know, mother is mother, father is father, family is family, school is school. But I am alone. These children don't feel alone. They are very happy with mother and father only. But they feel alone. Right? Now, their mental life is stuck into another challenge. The challenge is, Intimacy, intimacy versus isolation. What is intimacy? Developing closeness to another human being. With all your trust, surrendering your autonomy to some degree, taking initiative for yourself and other person, developing the competences to make your life easy and other person's life easy and having the capability not to be only devoted to your own professional goal, but also to other persons. The capability of loyalty. Many people are not capable of that. Right? Now, if you are positively developed, you will resolve to intimacy. You will decide that in spite of many troubles, in new relations, it's worth it. Let me give you an example. Let's suppose in your class, there is a girl who is very positive minded. And unfortunately, she gets a boyfriend who is negatively developing. Now, girl who is very positive minded, what she will do? She is in a big test in relationship. But if she has developed in a positive way, when boyfriend is not behaving in a good way, she will be still hopeful. She will have a true willpower to change him according to her wishes. Right? She will work on that purpose. She will develop new skills to tame that boyfriend. And even when boyfriend is fooling around, she will remain loyal. And one day boyfriend will say, oh, my girlfriend really loves me. Is that right? But if she is developed in a negative way, when boyfriend become a little bit less interested in her, she will become hopeless. She will not have will and determination to continue the relationship in spite of some trouble. She will never work with a special purpose, how to improve this particular relationship. She is not interested to develop new skills for this particular relationship. And she will also become disloyal. Do you think their love can go far? No. So all these things will now determine that either your mind will decide, your emotional circuits in your mind will decide that intimacy is worth it in spite of all problems. Or if you are a person who are unfortunately weaker in personality, with little, little trouble in intimate relation, you will say these are hopeless situations. I cannot win over there. And you start getting isolated. 
So it means that if you're the person who is positively developing, he has a stronger capacity of intimacy. The person who is negatively developing, he has weaker capacity for intimacy. So he will eventually like to be emotionally isolated. Is that right? He may have girlfriend, this person who is isolated, but he will not emotionally share with her. He will not trust her. And girlfriend will know that he is not trusting me. Do you think relationship will go ahead? It won't. Am I clear? If you develop this positive, what is the reward of this stage? Mr. Vyagni will tell me. You are quite an experienced man. <laughs> if you work through this stage in a very positive way, what is the reward, the strength in your personality? Pause talk. Love. What is the love? That is the, you become a loving person. You know who is a loving person? That even in bad circumstances, when he loves, he really loves. When things in the loving relationships are going bad, they remain hopeful. If there is crisis, they will have still will and determination, not run away and break away from relationship. And they will especially work on that. And in very bad times, they will remain loyal. They will truly love other person. Is that right? So they will become loving people, a loving personality. Is that right? So, and okay, there's an interesting thing I must tell you that Eric Erikson gave one concept of ideal love. I always feel that that concept, he call it genital utopia. You know, love is basically uh, opposite gender love. This is actually an effort. Yes, it is an effort to expand yourself in this universe. Because you want to be with someone, you want to share your life, you want to trust, and you want to recreate and procreate. Is that right? You want to have children when you truly love someone. So what really happens, there is a very interesting thing which Eric Erickson said about love. He said the whole purpose of love is mute. He has given six criteria for that. And I feel some females have written this statement. He has said that true love should have, number one, mutuality of orgasm. Both of them seek that other person should have orgasm also. Not like that men just ejaculate and sleep, turn their side and sleep. And she is wondering why I'm here. Right? So number one, mutuality of orgasm. Criteria number two. Mutuality of orgasm number two, with a loved partner. With a, not with anyone around from the street, with a loved partner. Number three, partner should be from opposite sex. Right? If a male is having orgasm with a male, a female is having with a female, according to Eric Erickson, that is not genital utopia. Is that right? Again, I will repeat first three criteria, but they are sex. He says, that at this stage, someone who has reached successfully what he will want out of life. He want or she wants mutuality of mutuality of orgasm with the loved one partner, right? From opposite gender, right? With whom one is willing and able to share trust. The true love is not only sex and orgasms. There should be some degree of trust in between. Right? So there should be also trust. And with whom, any other person, with whom one is able to regulate the cycles of work, cycles of procreation, and cycles of recreation. True love does not mean just sex. Again, I'm repeating the component which Eric Erickson said that genital utopia, he says it's ideal, it is not achievable. But this is what almost every girl think that if it can happen in her life and maybe some boys also. Number one, mutuality of orgasm. Number two, with a loved partner. Number three, from the opposite gender. Number four, where you can share trust. You can have trust on each other about every matter of the life. Number five, with whom you can share your cycles of work, cycles of procreation and recreation. They should cooperate with each other in these matters about their work habits, about their procreation plan. If girl want to be mother and father does not want to be, he says, no, you just remain my girlfriend. I will take 20 years to complete my career and then I want to be father. 
that is not an ideal situation, right? So they should be able to regulate their cycles of work, procreation and recreation with each other so that both of them provide a very strong platform for the personality development of their offsprings. You are understanding? So things started from the sexual orgasm and ended up on raising the children with strong personalities. That is the whole ideal situation. Is that right? Okay. Now, your age is somewhere between 20 to 40. Either you will develop intimacy or you will develop isolation. And if you have worked hard to be for intimacy, then the quality you have developed, love. Now, something better and stronger than love is there. In the next stage this is the second last stage. Now your age is somewhere between 40 to 60 years. Personality is still developing. There is something very special reward at this stage that is a reward stronger and better than love. I know in your age you think there's nothing better than love, but we'll say it. First of all, the mental task at this stage of development. It is against generativity. Generativity versus stagnation. Stag Nation. Now what is generativity versus stagnation? Generativity is a term used when there's a change in your, you start thinking in a very different way. You start thinking that how you can contribute for humanity. How you can contribute for upcoming generations. Whatever you have learned from life, you want to give that information and teach it to younger generations with a purpose to make their life easier. That is generativity. A very common example of generativity is when men and women love their children. Right? They are taking care of them. But a stronger people who have hope and determination and purpose and they have developed many skills in their life and they have developed devotion with certain goals of their life and they have been loving adult, they develop a very special thing. Now they are not thinking of only love and they are not thinking of only their loved ones. Now you will find someone working in New York sending some check for an African child whom he has never met or maybe helping some younger people and giving some advice. Maybe he's not a rich man, he's just a taxi driver, but that taxi driver is telling a younger taxi driver what are the special secrets of the trade. Or there may be a 45 year old woman who is telling another woman, that adult woman, young adult woman, like 20 year old woman that how to handle the males. You are getting it? A new, very strong wish start that you have lived here for 40 years, you have been through so much things, you want to contribute to the upcoming generations and you want to make the things easier for them. That is generativity. Or you go to opposite side, stagnation. You become a negative way. You think, world is not trustworthy, right? You have all negative experiences. At this stage you think, oh, I could not achieve whatever I wanted. I've been in a nasty world for such a long time, right? And you think, even younger people, they're dangerous for me, they're trying to compete me. World population is going too much, right? And they get upset. They don't, whatever they have, they don't want to share with coming generations. It's not a matter of money. It's so, the way you mentally think. I remember in my country, there was a woman who used to work in our family as a maid and she was always happy. Only worry she had that there is a one very poor girl getting married and how she can collect the money and buy some thing which can make her marriage situation better. Or that woman who is 45 year old, so poor, she was maid in our family but she is always thinking there is another very poor woman, her child is very sick, I should arrange medicine. Right? And then there were earthquake in my country. And that woman was one of those women with little money. She just collect the things. First of all, 
right? Warm clothes is another thing and go and deposit to some place so that those things will be transported to the earthquake strike an area. That was generativity. Opposite to that, we have a merchant in our neighbors. He has everything, but he thinks that all other people are trying to grab the things from him. He thinks world is not a good place, right? He has, suppose, one million dollars, but he thinks he's hopeless that he can make more. And even he's worried if he loses this, what will happen? He is not going to help anyone. So now there's another crisis. You have to decide that you will participate in generativity or you will become stagnant. If you have negative experiences, you will become stagnant. Because now you know you're going downhill. Around 40, you start feeling your strengths are going down. And if you have negative experiences, you say, my strengths are going down. Whatever I have, I don't want to share with anyone. But if you're positively developed, whatever your weaknesses and strengths, you want to make life easier for the upcoming generation. You know, what is the strength you develop here? No, care. You, start, you become a caring person. Let me tell you the difference between love and care. When you love someone, you want some reciprocation. For example, if you love someone and that person does not love you back, can you keep on loving? You become angry. Even you say, oh, our relationship is not true love. Is that right? Love is a quality in which you, whenever you give love to others, you expect it is conditioned. You expect love in return. But when you are caring, and true caring, you don't expect return. If someone is working for some orphan children, is he expecting something in return? If an old taxi driver telling a young boy who has started taxi driving that how to make, earn more money and give better service, he is expecting something from him? Or a 45 year old woman who is telling a younger woman how to resolve her emotional conflict with the boyfriend due to her experience. She is not expecting that boyfriend will come to her. So, caring is something beyond love. I will define caring is loving people without return expectations. Right? Only very lucky people reach to this stage. That whatever their life, you may find in your school, that you may find a gate man, a poor man, and he is in generativity. You may find a very strong rich man, but he is stagnant. Start with your own self. You care for yourself, you care for your children, you care for your friends, and then you start caring even those people whom you don't know. Is that right? Your personality has developed up to now. Now you go 60 and beyond. Right? 60 and plus. And here you may have this crown. Or you may be very disturbed man or very happy man. You reach at this stage. Here again you have to do one more mental task to develop your personality and you have a chance to get the last and the best reward of your life. The mental task is integrity versus despair. This is the time when old people start looking back on their life. They look, the inning they have played is well played or not. How was the life? Is that right? Now, what really happens in old age? There is a lot of tragedies coming. Your physical strength is weak. You may develop uh, financial insecurities. You start seeing your spouse may have died, your friends are dying, your relatives are dying in old age, right? And even you have a real risk of dying. At this stage, the person who has gone through these all positive things, okay, first I will tell you the negative person. Negative person at this age will become very despair, very negative experience of life at this stage. He is hopeless about his future and when his capabilities are reducing. Right? And what will happen to the negative? Okay, I will give you some example because it's complex to explain. I will give you an example to explain the situation. You may find an old man sitting there and he sees young people and he is very, very unhappy. Why young people are so happy? 
why they should be happy. They are very nasty boys and girls. Our old times were good, right? He does. He can only be angry with them or scold them, but he is not willing to give any advice or make things easier for them. And as he see younger generations, their strength, their beauty, their enthusiasm disturb him. And he will, he's more fearful of death. And he's feeling, person who has gone through negative experiences, he's feeling that he has lost the inning. And he will decide, world was not worth living place. But in spite of that decision, he is more afraid of death because there is uncertainty what will happen after that. This person is a big trouble for himself as well as for anyone other who is going to take care of this old person. Right? You just imagine that there is one boy and girl and they are trying to make some love or some situation, kissing around and an old woman look at them and she becomes angry. When we were like this, no one allowed us this. They don't know how to do this. Why they should do here? They should know I'm here. They should go somewhere else. This generation, world is going to be destroyed because these, this generation is there. You know, hopelessness. Opposite to that, look at a person who is negative, uh, who is positively developed. Maybe 80 year old person who has cancer. He is going to die maybe after one month. The old woman, but she has developed positive thing. She has hope. She say, okay, I'm going to die. So what? My children will live. Even she does not have children. She thinks other person's children will live on earth. World is becoming better. I have played my inning well. I'm very comfortable with myself. Right? And she will be happy that I've played my innings well. And I, as, for, as long as I'm alive, I will enjoy seeing other people playing. Even this time become fun for them. Maybe this old woman who's having cancer, she is going to die after a few days and her grandson come and she still has all the positive trait to tell the fairy tales to the grandson. Is that right? Still she can imagine my grandson will be very strong and he will have children and things will become good and the world is becoming better. You are getting it. And still at this time the people will try to contribute to the world. And if what we say, they have developed integrity, strength. And all these personality strength will come together. And you will develop a very special trait. What is that? Wisdom. Integrity comes with, along with it, it brings wisdom. And the more the crux of wisdom is that a special type of thinking develop at this stage if you have been on the positive side. You are not loving only yourself, not only your family. You start loving the everyone in the world. You start loving and caring for the mankind. You say mankind is my kind. You don't expect 10 year old child to love everyone in the world. But person who has gone through positive, he will love everyone in the world. And he will love it so much that even death is very imminent, they are still happy that many other human beings are living. And probably they will make the world better than this. So they will go with confidence, without fear, face the death. And these people, while they are moving towards the death, right? They started generativity and then integrity. Do you think? Before they die, they raise their kids in a negative way or positive way, people on the side? Positive way. So Eric Rickson said when he written all this theory in the end, that if elderly are not afraid of death, then their children are not afraid of life. If elderly are not afraid of death, then their children are not afraid of life. What he was saying, that if you are positively developing, you will take care of your children such a way that first of all, you are so strong, you can face the death. And then you will raise the children who can face the life and challenges. But somewhere if elderly are very much afraid of death, believe me, their children are afraid of life and the challenges. Because of a negative minded person here, weak personality here, raising the children in weak ways. 
You are understanding it? And the beauty of all this thing is that life started with the lap of mother. Life started with the lap of mother. If you have positive experiences from there, when you will go to the lap of your loved one, you will have again positive experiences. And such person who, is who has started his travel from the lap of mother in a positive way, when he will go to loved one, he will have positive experiences. And when he is going to the lap of God, he is anticipating more positive experiences. Am I clear to everyone? Lastness.